one game at a time, a one play at a time team. And uh, we open up with Savannah State. You know, I'm not going to sit up here and, you know, they didn't have that all good of a record, that hot of a record last year. Uh, they got some new players in. They've got some transfers from Division One in that'll help their team. So we've got to be ready to play um, a good game that opening game. Then we go to Minnesota. Uh, Minnesota's a lot better than what they were last time we played them in 2010. Their defensive line is really, really talented. Uh, they were a bowl team last year. Uh, they've been very, very competitive in the Big Ten. So they're a much improved team. And then we play. Uh, you know, Western Kentucky will be our first conference game coming down here, the third game. And, you know, you got Memphis, you got BYU out of conference there to finish up with. So it's a challenging schedule uh, out of conference. And then I really believe everybody in conference is going to be better than what they were last year. And uh, so uh, we've got to take it one game at a time and, you know, keep that same mentality and philosophy that we're going to play our best this week and worry about next week when it gets here. I think we're in great position. I had a meeting last night. Um, that big five, that's going to happen. That separation is going to happen. Uh, I really believe that conference movement, people moving, I think it's probably done uh, for at least for a while anyway. Uh, and I think we've positioned ourselves as a conference with the teams we've added, who we're replacing, the teams that we lost with are, we're in a good geographical area. Uh, so I think we've put ourselves in a great position with our bowl packages, uh, with our bowl destinations, with our TV packages. I think we put ourselves in a position that we can be that sixth best conference. And uh, everybody in Conference USA is competitive. Uh, you know, we've all got to improve, you know, our facilities. Uh, and that's going to happen, you know. So uh, I, I just think we've, where we are now, I'm so glad we're in Conference USA and we put our position in, put, put ourselves in a position to be successful, you know, here for a long time. I think the big thing is when you lose somebody, you know, you hope that what you've recruited behind them uh, has matured, has gotten stronger, has developed good enough that he can replace that guy that graduates. Uh, I guess I probably worry as much about guys getting hurt as I do graduating. And you think about, you know, everybody's going to talk about the quarterback. And I understand that because it's the focal position on a team. But I'm equally concerned at who's going to replace Jimmy Staten on the defensive line, who was a fifth round draft pick with the Seattle Seahawks. You know, that, that question to me, you guys probably aren't too concerned about that, but I'm as much, I talk and think about that as much as I do the quarterback position. What's probably, you worry about Adam Moore as much as anything is if, who's replacing Jimmy Staten, if he gets hurt, now you're replacing him with a guy that's probably not physically ready to play, you know, he's probably not, hadn't been here long enough. Just like Jimmy, Jimmy reported here, when we signed Jimmy, Jimmy was a 228 pound defensive end that we thought would grow in to a defensive lineman. He played his last two years at 300 pounds and was a good player. If Jimmy would have had to play as a red shirt freshman at 236 pounds, he wouldn't have been ready. You know, so those, those same concerns. So I think over the years, Adam, I've learned to that you've got to adjust, you've got to have a plan for everything, uh, for graduation and for replacing guys that get hurt? It's not really a concern of mine. All those kids that you mentioned are, all have leadership qualities. Now they're just in a position to, to be the leader. Uh, you know, quarterbacks, every, all of those kids can lead. Uh, they've done it, they did it in high school. Marcus Henry's a, another guy who's, you know, been a leader and at times is a vocal leader. Uh, you know, it's our job as coaches to put the guys that we think uh, can be leaders and put them in those situations and, and the right guys will follow. But uh, it's probably more of an inexperience than it is than anything. The guys just hadn't been there. But uh, all, all, all that stuff will sort itself out. There's only one leader of the program. And uh, we put our ideas together and we try to put together the best philosophy to help us come out with a win. 
Uh, the best thing about it is very little egos. Of course, we all take pride in the product that we put on the field. But uh, my number one objective is to get the W and then let's try to keep them out of the end zone as much as possible. Coach Stock and I's philosophies and backgrounds are very similar anyway from an offensive standpoint. So, um, you know, if he's got an idea or something or I got an idea, yeah, we talk. We got a great relationship. He's very open minded uh, when it comes to being a head coach and, 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 like you said earlier, giving us, you know, some leeway and some freedom and stuff. But ultimately, you know, we, we converse on everything that we do we, and we're going to do whatever it takes uh, to win the game. And uh, that's that's what I believe in, whether it's 12 to 11 or it's 41-40. I don't care. We just want to win, and um, that's our that's our goal. Ever since I've been playing here, I mean, my main objective is to win the game. I'm here to win ball games. It's not really about breaking records. Of course, now that it's come to my attention, it's in the back of my mind. But during the game, I'm not too much worried about it. I just want to win the ball game. And I feel like it will come with it if I just keep that mentality of winning. I've been playing here, it's going to be my third year start. I do feel like it's my opportunity, it's my chance. And I feel honored to be heading to the position to lead this football team and lead the defense. You know, I feel like Jimmy and Logan was two great leaders. And Jimmy's one, like my big brother, he's one of the best leaders that I've ever seen. So, I mean, it's going to be a little bit tough not having those guys in the locker room. But I feel like we're all well prepared. And even some other guys who actually have experience on the field, we're all capable of leading the team. Nobody can do it. like the exact same as the person before you. You're either going to do it better or worse. But, I mean, as us becoming more vocal, I mean, it's not hard. You just, if the people that look up to you believe in what you say and what you do and how you act, then everything else should fall in place. Vocally, I'm not really much of a vocal leader like that. I just, I believe in leading by example and just what you do on and off the field. I mean, if they they should, they they should watch what you do on and off the field, and I mean they can they can lead by I mean follow by that. Not necessarily vocally, that's not necessarily what I do. Um, it's not a concern because I feel I mean it's a handful of players that actually have experience on this team to be leaders. Um, but in my opinion, I'm not the type of guy to just be vocal. I'm more of like Jordan. I'm just a hard worker. I lead by example. I feel if you, you know, see me working hard, then that should make you in your mind be like, okay. This is my teammate, he's working hard, so maybe I should work hard or step it up. Uh, I come more into being vocal when it comes down to if we're in practice and, you know, receiver, he drops a ball, or if somebody on the defense, if they drop an interception or anything like that, I come in to be as a vocal leadership. Like, I come in as a vocal leader in those type of situations.